When you first go into Photoshop, you will see your screen looking something like this. This is Creative Cloud 2015. Your desktop doesn't look like this at the moment. Let's just do a quick reset before we do anything else. To do that, go to Window at the top, come down to Workspace, across and down and say Reset Essentials. Now all of our screens will look the same and it makes it simpler when we're working. Of course, as you start to get working within Photoshop, you may want to change this. On the left hand side of the screen, you will see that there is a toolbox. As you go down this toolbox, you can click on a tool and you'll see that there are many other tools hidden beneath them. The clue is if there's a little tiny black arrow just in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, that shows that there are more tools hiding underneath that particular tool. If there is no tool, a little black corner, it means that's the only tool on that block. Further down on the left hand corner, it shows you the colours. Now the two colours we've got here is we have got a foreground colour. So if you hover over it, it will tell you that you are now on foreground colour. And also there's something called a background colour. Now it's very easy to change one of those. And if you also want to reset them, on the top left hand little corner section here, it says default foreground and background colours. Click on it and it puts them back to black at the top and white as a background colour. Next to it, there's a little tiny double-headed arrow. If you click on it, it switches the colours back and forward. Now, if I want to change the colour, I click on it. It will bring up my colour picker and I can click anywhere within this screen. And over on this hand side here, you'll see there's a pair of sliders. As I drag, what this will do is it will change the colours that I'm using. I can release at any point and go to the greens, to the blues, I can pick a different section. Notice how this block up here changes according to what I'm doing. Now, this top right hand corner here is the pure colour. In the top left hand corner you have got white and then to the bottom corner over here you have got black. This is mixing together the colours as we go. So down here we've got a central section and we're adding in more of a colour. Now if I add more white into a colour, it becomes a tint. If I add more black into a colour, it becomes a shade. So this gives us complete flexibility to pick a colour of our choice. When we click on OK, it will now change that foreground colour. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to fill my background. On the right hand side we have got something called a layers palette and you'll see here we have got the background layer. I would like to fill that in with colour. To fill it in we need to unlock it. That's very simple. Double click the layer and what we can then do is just simply click on OK. Now you'll notice that down here it now has no lock symbol on that layer and it will allow us to actually paint it full of colour. I've already selected my colour, I've gone for a bright pink because that's my kind of thing. And now what I need to do is I need to find the fill bucket. It's halfway up but it's hidden at the moment. You'll see this has got a gradient tool. If I click and hold this tool down you'll see I've got a paint bucket tool. So I click on it, move over to my background, click on the background, it will fill it in in a lovely pink colour. What we're going to do now is we're going to put some text onto this postcard. We're going to use the text tool. Over on the left you will see there is a T. Hovering over it, it says horizontal type tool. Click on it and it brings up a text icon here. Now there's two ways to work when you're doing text. I could just simply click it now onto the background and it would start my text writing. But if I actually click and drag, it creates a text box for me to put my text inside. You'll see that there's a little flashing cursor up just near my mouse at the moment and that's ready for me to start to type into. At the top of the screen, we have got a toolbar. 
Now this changes depending on which tool we're using. We have lots of different fonts available. We have got whether it's regular, italic, and this will change depending on the type of font we've selected. We've also got the font size in here. For the moment, we're going to go back and we're going to just simply use the default font that's already in there, and I'm just going to type Crafty SLH. That's the little name that I normally use when I'm on things like Twitter, if I'm going to do any form of online work, I always use Crafty SLH. Now, you'll spot at the moment that I have got no text showing. That's because if you look up on the toolbar at the moment, the colour of the text is the same as the colour of the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the text and I'm going to start to use shortcut keys. This works in any different package, this simple select all option. By simply hitting Ctrl and A on your keyboard, you will select all of the text that you have actually typed in. I'm going to go and change the colour, and I'm going to go back for a basic black for the moment and click on OK. You can now see that the text is there, but it, it's visible, but it's a bit small. I want to make it bigger. So I'm going to use the font size, make sure it's selected still, otherwise this won't work, and I'm going to take the font up a bit. Let's take it up a bit bigger, 60. That's fine on this one. Now you'll notice that there it seemed to only go up as far as 72. What happens if I want to make it any bigger? You can simply type in this box up here a different font size. So I could put 80 in and hit enter, and it makes it bigger. Okay, now that font's pretty boring, so I'm going to find a different font that's a little bit more interesting. And as I go down and hover over each font in the background, you can see it changing. So let's see what we've got. You can also move up and down the list. And depending on what fonts you've got actually installed on your computer at this moment in time, will vary with what you can actually see. Now there's another tool which is up on this left hand corner called the move tool. So if I click on that, that now allows me to move that text around wherever I want it to be. Now there are some very clever ways of working with the size of that font. Let's say now I've been on the move tool, if I want to go and edit that font, over on the right hand side you'll notice that we've now got a new layer and it's got a T in it that shows it's a text layer. If I double click on the T in this box, it selects all of my text. Now what I want to do is I don't want to actually type in a font size every single time. What I want to do now is I want to try and make it fit my screen. So if I click in the box and I use the up and down arrows, I can move it one point at a time. If I hold the shift down, I can make it jump 10 points at a time, which is a very clever way of making this work and fit. You can see here it's just gone a little bit too big. I'm going to go back now down point by point until it properly fits the screen. Nearly there, there we go. So actually 143 points and it fits on my screen. Okay. We've got the font at the moment, and the colour of the font is currently black. I want to actually make this font a little bit more um, colourful. So I've gone up to the font tool at the top, and the font line, and I've actually gone in to where the actual colour is. And I'm going to turn this a really deep blue colour. You'll see why in a moment. It's going to really stand out on your screens for the moment. Perhaps we'll take it a little bit lighter. That's better. And go OK. Now, You'll notice behind here, we can't really see the text at the moment, so we're going to go up to the Move tool and click on that. And that allows my text now to show very clearly exactly what it looks like against the background. But that font could look a lot more um, adventurous. Down in that bottom right hand corner, you'll notice that we've got the layer selected. Let's go and have a look at some of the special effects we can apply to that layer. At the bottom there's an FX standing for special effects, so it's a layer style. If we click on it, and I'm going to actually do a drop shadow down at the very bottom. And what this will do is this will bring up 
an extra box. I'm just moving it over on the screen just so that you can see what's happening behind it. Now you'll notice here there's this whole section of lots of different options. Do not be afraid of working with this kind of stuff. Just play. Let's see what happens if I change the distance. Notice as I'm dragging this distance, it's moving that shadow away from my text. What about the spread? That's how much shadow it's got behind it. How big is it? Whoa. Perhaps we'll move it back so it's not quite so offset. There's many different things you can do to this. At the moment, it's a colour black, so you could change the colour of it. Let's have a little look what else we've got on here. There's lots of these that you can play with. I'm going to tick the bevel and emboss box. What this will do is it will actually bevel and emboss my text. But you'll notice this box over here hasn't changed because we've still got the drop shadow shaded. That's the one that's selected. Let's go and see what happens when I click on the bevel and emboss options here. Now you can change the depth and you can change a little bit more of what's going on. So you'll see that my bevel and embossing is doing some great effects on the left and I'm going to click on OK. So you can see that this font has near, really now stood out. Now I want to zoom in. I'm going to go over to the left of the toolbox, click on the zoom and I can literally just click and zoom in. If you want to zoom back out again, you can right click and zoom out. If you want to left click, it will zoom in and you can start to see what is actually happening to your bevel and emboss. Wherever you are, whichever tool you're using, one very quick tip, hold your spacebar down and it brings a little hand up and you can now just drag your design over. Now let's have a look a bit more detail at those special effects that we were working with. If you go over now and have a little look at your layers, you'll see that there are some special effects now showing. If I double click on Bevel and Emboss, it will bring the Bevel and Emboss box up. So let's see what happens in a little bit more detail when I change these settings. So the depth, let's move it down a little bit. You can see that this here isn't quite so beveled. How big? You can get some exceedingly unusual effects. And if you want to, you can even play with these contours and make it look very unusual. Notice you can click on it and come up with some unusual effects. That looks more metallic. So this is how you can look, make your text look as though it's being chromed. If I leave it on that one, and we'll zoom back out now. So, because I'm actually using this magnifying glass at the moment, if I say fit on screen, it will fit everything back onto the screen. Okay, so it's a very clever way of working. You'll also see at the top here we have got a minus. At the moment I'm set at plus, so I can zoom in wherever I'm actually clicking. I can change it to a minus and zoom back out and zoom back in again. And you can get some amazing effects. What we can also do is still edit the text and still change what it looks like. I'm just going to fit this back on screen again and we're going to go down to the text on the text layer, double click the T, that selects all of the text and let's change it to a different kind of font. And as I hover you can see if I go to elephant regular here, go click my move tool, how that looks very different considering what I've done to the actual font. Now you'll notice here that I've lost my SLH off the end. Double click on the T, let's go back down, click in the text box and use the down arrow to make everything fit back onto my screen. Got to go down quite a long way. Okay. So each font will do things in a very different way. It does depend on the size, it depends on what you're doing and the font effects. Some look good with some types of font, others don't. 
So now we've added font to our postcard. What we're going to do is we're going to go and look on Google now for an image. I'm going to look for a palm tree. Now please be careful, this isn't as simple as it sounds. We can't just click on images, take one of these images and now use it. What we have to be careful of is we've got the, the legal right to use it and it isn't going to be covered by copyright. So we're going to try and do a few things to ma minimise on the chances of us using an image that we shouldn't. So we're going to use advanced search. We're going to go down and change where it says usage rights at the moment and make it say free to use, share or modify, even commercially. That means business kind of image. And I'm going to go and do an advanced search. Now, they're not brilliant at the moment, those images. I'm going to go down to the type of image at the moment. Actually, let's go for size first of all. Let's go for a large image, something that's really good quality. I'm really after something that's more of a clip art image. So under type, we're going to say clip art. That's better. I've got some really decent images now. So it allows me to now pick one. Now, I'm going to pick this image. Now, you should actually be able to just drag from here straight into Photoshop. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we're going to go and hover over the Photoshop, bring it back in and click it on the screen. And I'm going to hit enter and see what happens. This is what happens occasionally. You might find you've got a problem. If it won't come in, go back to the image, visit the page it was actually on. So there we now have the image. And we can now click and drag it from there down over Photoshop. And now it should work. So we've got that copy of that image in there. You'll also notice on the right it's on that layer. We've got a problem though. That image has got a black background. It's also a little bit small for my screen. I'd like to make it a little bit bigger. Let's first of all deal with the size. If we go to edit, come down to transform, we have got something called scale. Scaling allows me to now change that image and it's got little handles at the top and at the sides so I can make it fatter, I can make it longer. And as I'm drawing this and dragging it, you'll notice, I'm going to be very, very large with this, it seems to be pixelating as I do it. So that's not, it, you're wondering why this is happening. It's because it's savouring on memory. So don't worry if it looks like it's pixelating at this moment in time. It will sort itself out in a minute. But I have a problem with this image. I've now dragged it out of proportion. Let's put it back in proportion. It should always be relative. You don't want something too wide or too tall unless it's deliberately being done that way for your Im image that you're working on. Click on this little option in the toolbar up here. All that does is forces it back to be the correct size and in proportion. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller again so I can click the top corner and make it a little bit smaller and make it fit. Now, you don't have to use that top little option here. Instead, you could hold the shift bar down as you click and drag. So if I turn that off, now notice now it's going back out of proportion again. Let's put it back. I can now hold the shift button down instead and click and drag it, and it's always going to keep it in proportion. So I'm going to take it that big, hit enter, and now you'll see that that has actually redrawn it and made it a much better quality. So that's good. We've now got an image in there. But I don't want the back background. What I want to do is I actually want to use something called the magic wand. And what it will do is it will allow me to select everything that's black and get rid of it out of this image. Now we've got to find it. Where is it? Now, if you have a little look under the quick selection tool, there you will find the magic wand. The reason I'm showing you the magic wand is this has always worked in whichever version of um, Photoshop you're using. We'll have a look at other tools as well, but let's see what happens with the magic wand. If I click on the black background of this image, it will select every little bit of black. You'll notice I've got lots of little marching ants here and it has selected the background of that image. If I hit the delete key, it gets rid of the background. Under select, we can use the deselect option now, which turns off those marching ants, or there's a shortcut key of Control D, 
you'll notice there's my palm tree. So I'm going to go, click on Move Tool and I can move my palm tree around. And what happens if I want another palm tree? I've got a layer here. It says layer one. What was on it? A palm tree. Let's rename the layer. Double click the layer name. It's very important you know where you're clicking because if I click in a different area, it does something different to this particular um, layer. So layer one, and I'm going to call it palm tree. I want to get another palm tree. Very easy. Right click on the layer and say duplicate layer, palm tree copy. Click on OK. I've now got another palm tree. So if I click and drag what looks like one of the palm trees, miraculously, I've now got two of them. So I'm going to move this one over to the right hand side of the screen. I'd like it the other way around. I'd like to flip it horizontally. Under Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Now you say, what's the difference between the two? If I flip it vertically, it's going to do a headstand. Not what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Control Z, which undoes one step. You'll notice that at the top up here, there's something called history. If I want to take it back a step further, in here, I can jump back to different stages. But if I want to go one step back, I can go Control Z. So let me flip it the other way now. Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. I've now got two palm trees. What you can also do to these is you can then go down and put shadows on them. Let's put a drop shadow on it. I'm going to move the box over to the left hand side of the screen and again I can play with the shadows and move them around. You can just see what it's doing on the right there. What the spread's like, the size of it, how far away, the angle, make it go in different directions. Now one thing as I'm doing this, can you see what's happening to the light underneath my text? Notice how it's moving all of it together. That's because it's saying, hang on a minute, you want me to change the lighting. Well, if I change the lighting here, you don't want two different looks of lighting. You can untick this little box here to make each one have its own type of shadow. So if you get the shadow right on one thing, you can always move it. Let's take that round to wherever it was over there. Okay, so we've done lots of different things with it. Okay, so this tree has got a shadow on it. This tree hasn't got a shadow on it. But we have now taken text, put it onto your screen. We've actually changed the background colour. We've now brought a graphic in and got rid of the background on that one. We've duplicated it and put it on this side. I'm just going to go back now down to where I've got my um, Google Images. Let's go back to where we were at. And I want to find something that's a little bit more intricate to work with for a minute. Let's just take this tree, for example. I'm going to go and visit the page just so I can make sure I've actually got the correct image. There's the image. I'm going to drag it over and bring it in. I'm going to edit and transform it and scale it and hold the shift down while I make it bigger and hit enter. Now if I use the magic wand on this layer and click on the background, can you see that there are some little white bits here that it hasn't selected? If your image has got these kind of little white blobs or you've got a different colour in the middle and you need to select it. We're going to go and zoom in on this and add these in so we can get rid of them. So if I go Control plus on the keyboard it allows me to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. I can add to my selection by holding the shift down and I can click and add 
more images like so. so every time I click it's adding now you'll notice that sometimes it's leaving little bits out that's to do with this magic thing called tolerance it takes 32 pixels either side of my design at the moment and adds them into my selection so if I make that say 50 and now select something it actually makes it a little bit easier okay I could also say select similar and it would just find everything that's within that color range if it's selecting too much of the color change your tolerance down really low now when I hit delete it's going to delete all of those little bits of color I'm going to zoom back out now to actually see my whole picture so to zoom out go control minus now I don't really want that tree in the middle I've changed my mind on the right hand side you will now see that that layer has got a little tiny eye next to it I can hide that layer notice the marching ants I don't want the selection we check that the shortcut key to stop that to go and do a deselect is control D so I'm going to use control D and that now does not show on my screen so over here on the right hand side I can now go and put next to that layer turn it on and turn it off which is very very handy if I want to delete the layer which is what I'm going to do I can either right click on the layer and say on here delete layer or another thing that you can do is you can drag that layer down over the little bin at the bottom and let go and it puts it into the bin for you notice if you have had problems I'm just going to put this back this little option here is your history it does mean I can jump back before I deleted it or I can jump back forward again and say yes go back to where I was and delete that layer this does give you a lot of flexibility you can also you'll see here that the effects on this palm tree have got a shadow on them the other one doesn't once you've done some effects on a layer you can right click the layer copy the layer style go down to the other one right click paste the layer style so you can have some form of duplication if I now want another copy of that palm tree I can take that palm tree drag it down over my new layer which is down here at the bottom let go and it's done another copy of it I'm going to go and select the move tool and down and move my palm tree around so this is where you can slightly take the actual um, palm tree and move it out of the way those of you that like playing and want to start to investigate a little bit more are thinking oh perhaps I could make that a little bit smaller perhaps I could tweak it sideways let me introduce you to a lovely transform called free transform now, this allows you to right click and do things like skew it which means as we now drag on the arrows you can actually make it move slightly we can right click on it and say distort it and now you can make it do some very weird and wonderful things so that's clever my tree's gone really badly you can make it warp so you can bring certain bits of it down so we've got one basic image and we're now doing some really weird things to it so it gives you a bit more of a flexibility and hit enter when you finished so now I've got another palm tree well perhaps that palm tree ought to be behind that palm tree in word you would do things like looking after sending to back that doesn't happen in Photoshop instead what we do is we take the layer and it's the order of the layers that matters so we'll take that one and drag it down behind the other one that's there notice now it's gone behind just some simple tip, tips and techniques um, one other thing you may want to do is at the moment that background is completely plain we talk about different ways of doing backgrounds 
One thing we could do now is we could actually put a gradient on that background. Now notice we're on that background layer. I'm going to change my background colour on the left and I'm going to put a very different colour in it. Let's go and put something that's a very pale yellow in. So a creamy kind of colour. We can see where the fill bucket is. Instead now I'm going to hold that down and change the gradient tool. Notice up here on the left the gradient goes from my foreground colour to my background and at the moment it's just going on a linear, that means in a straight line. So I can grab from the top and go over to the right and make it have a background that goes from one side to the other. Or I can go from the right to the left, wherever I start and wherever I finish. If I only start halfway through the middle and finish halfway through the middle, it's now plain colour until I start the gradient, until I finish the gradient and then finishes it off. I could go from a corner. I could go from a the middle there. What happens though if I change it to be radial and centre out, centre down? However long you make this line will be where the gradient appears. A very unusual one here is where we have got the uh, angle gradient. So this one can give some very weird and fun effects. Straight from the middle down, from that corner over. So you could, here you can see it's merging through on those corners, but you've just got this straight line at the bottom. You can also do something like a horizon level, where it's just across those sections. And then there's also this final one, which is a diamond gradient, which produces some very weird and wonderful effects. That can be great when you're working with sunshines. Not only is there the basic colours, when you pull down the gradient picker, you've also got some options to put in things like this. If I go back to the beginning, because it's got some transparency behind it, what it's doing is it's overlaying what's behind there. See, you can get some very weird and wonderful effects. Your turn to produce a postcard for me. Please, when you've done it, make sure you save as you go along make sure you upload a copy of your postcard and then there's an additional task for you to work on to practice your skills. Have fun, good luck.